What are the problems that Indian cities are currently facing? That's the question we started with when we wanted to understand how to build climate resilient Indian cities. India is being rapidly urbanized and that makes us subject to a lot of developmental threats. This includes poor sewage and wastewater management, making our lakes and rivers, which are natural flood buffers, remain perennially full with sewage and wastewater. Wastewater disposal from industries also pollutes the water with chemical effluents, causing our lakes and rivers to froth. Poor solid waste management is another huge problem in cities. It often leads to clogged drains and leaves our water bodies filled with garbage. All of this causes floods, as there's no place in water bodies to store the excess storm water in heavy rains. We also consume large amounts of fresh water, and this is made possible because the price of fresh water tends to be low compared to other utilities. To meet this high demand, we mostly rely on faraway rain-fed sources of water. For instance, Bengaluru draws most of its fresh water from the Kaveri River, which is located almost 100 kilometers away, and the water needs to be further pumped up to a height of 300 meters to supply the city. This has huge energy implications. To meet the city's remaining water demand, we withdraw fresh water from groundwater sources, but we're unable to recharge the same groundwater sources at the rate at which we consume from them. Groundwater is a limited resource that will run out if we don't recharge it consistently. The way our buildings are designed and laid out also makes it harder for recharge to occur. Most of the areas surrounding our buildings are paved, and this doesn't allow for rainwater to seep in. All of this causes droughts. Poor building design additionally causes overheating because of lack of adequate ventilation, inappropriately selected materials, and inadequate shading for the building envelope. This increases the need for air conditioning and leads to high energy consumption. Declining green cover only worsens this problem. When our cities lack green cover, there's nothing to keep the air pollution in balance. And this leads to us needing to use air-conditioned vehicles even more. All of this leads to extreme heat. Once we map these developmental threats, the next question we asked was, how are they contributing to climate change? We found that they cause increased greenhouse gas emissions that in turn worsen the climate threats that we face. But there are potential solutions to these problems. We began by looking at the infrastructure solutions first. We fully recognize that these can only work if we also have a robust community and governance system in place. We classify the infrastructure solutions under three categories, blue, green, and gray. While the blue and green layers help us deal with climate threats by providing buffers during extreme events, the gray layer helps greatly in managing resources efficiently, which is crucial when there are large populations at play. All three layers play complementary and crucial roles in building resilient and sustainable cities. Let's dive into each of these layers, starting with the blue. Blue infrastructure is made up of all the natural water bodies and waterways in the city, both surface and underground. Surface water bodies, like lakes and rivers, act both as natural flood buffers and potential sources of fresh water when maintained well. Boosting rainwater and groundwater storage will help us recharge underground water networks, giving us a backstop during droughts. Now let's look at the green layer. Green infrastructure refers to trees and green spaces in the city. Tree canopies play a key role in decreasing greenhouse gas emissions and increasing walkability by providing shade. Green spaces also increase groundwater recharge by providing permeable surfaces that allow rainwater to seep in. And finally, Let's look at the grey layer. Grey infrastructure comprises engineered solutions like wastewater treatment plants and stormwater channels. It's important to look at how they can boost circularity so that the ever-growing demand for amenities can be met. For instance, almost 40% of our current water needs for things like watering gardens or flushing toilets does not need to be portable. This could be easily replaced with treated wastewater. By doing this, we will simultaneously ensure that less wastewater is diverted into lakes and rivers, which can help in reducing the risk of floods. Improving solid waste management can make sure that our drains and water bodies are not clogged, which will go a long way in restoring our waterways and improving the quality of water. 
Increasing permeable roads and pavements can help in increasing absorption of rainwater and groundwater recharge. We also need to have better managed pipelines and stormwater drains so that our cities do not flood every time it rains. And finally, it's essential that we make our buildings sensitive to the local climate so that they do not overheat during summers. These are the CSEI's solutions for building climate resilient cities. What are some of the solutions to the climate threats that you have been considering? Get in touch with us at csei.org and we would love to collaborate with you.